In this tutorial, we're going to look at doing some JavaScript practice exercises, but practically applying your JavaScript skills to some content in the DOM. Hi, this is James from Junior Developer Central, and in this tutorial, we're going to be doing some more practice exercises, but this time we're actually going to be working with some content in a web page, otherwise known as the DOM. So all of the exercises will be focused around reading or manipulating parts of the document object model. And although in some instances you will be able to achieve the same results by changing the HTML or adding some CSS rules, we're going to do everything with JavaScript, just so you understand how you can manipulate the DOM with JavaScript, even though it might not be the best idea. If you do have a second before we start, don't forget to subscribe to support the channel and so you don't miss out on any future tutorial updates. So I've put a link to the exercises in the description below and the link will take you to CodePen where you can actually complete the exercises directly in the browser yourself or if you want to fork your own copy of it if you have a CodePen account, you can come up with your own various solutions and then save the results. I'll be going through these exercises one by one and providing you with a sample solution but if you want to go ahead and complete them yourself and then come back and compare afterwards or skip to a relevant solution if you get stuck then you can do that with the links in the description. And finally, if you do come up with your own solutions, feel free to post them as a comment or a link to your pen so we can see some other ways that these might be solved. So let's crack on with exercise one, which is basically to take all of the words in the paragraph text that are over eight characters long and highlight them with a yellow background. So if we just take a quick look at the markup for the exercises, you'll see it's really simple. There's just one heading level one tag and one paragraph tag. So we can safely just get that paragraph tag to get all of the text out of it. So I'm first of all going to select the paragraph tag. And I'll save that into a variable called paragraph. So to get the words in the paragraph, I'm going to use the split function. And I'm going to call that on the inner text property, which will basically give us all of the text that's inside of our paragraph. With those split into an array, I'm actually going to call the map function to change the contents of each of those items in the array. And I'm going to check if each word is larger than eight characters. And if it is, I'm going to actually wrap it in a new tag, a span tag, and set an inline style of a background color. And if it's not larger than eight characters, I'll simply return the word without any wrapping around it. Of course, we still have an array now, so we'll want to join it back into one string using the join function. And to actually update the paragraph tag itself, we need to assign this value back to the paragraph element. And I'm going to assign it to the inner HTML property because we don't want to lose the span tags that we've added within our map function. Oops, and it looks like I just forgot to close the quotes here in our span tag. So you can see now the text inside of our paragraph tag has got all of the words that are over eight characters highlighted with a background color of yellow. This is something that could have been neatened up if we created a CSS class as well, but just for ease of use, this does the job. So that's exercise one. Let's have a look at exercise two. So exercise two is just asking us to add a link to the bottom of the page that occurs after the paragraph tag that has a link back to the source of the text, which is actually the Foursome Ipsum website, which is a really useful Lorem Ipsum website generator. So we just need to create a new element and add a link back to the website. So there are a couple of ways that you can solve this one, but the way I'm going to solve it is to create a new anchor tag and then append it onto the body of the page. I'm going to set the href of the anchor tag to the website provided. And also give it some text so we can see it. And then finally, we're going to append it onto the bottom of the page. So if we look at the bottom of the page, you can see our link is appearing below the paragraph tag, and you should just be able to see that it's pointing to the right location. So another option we could have done for this exercise is to use a combination of the different elements on the page and access their inner HTML properties. And then we could just put the whole HTML link in ourselves without having to create a new anchor tag directly. But I think this way is nice and clean and it also offers you some flexibility if you need to make any changes later. So that's one solution for exercise two. Let's have a look at exercise three. 
So exercise 3 is asking us to split each new sentence onto a separate line in the paragraph text. And for this exercise we can assume that each string of text that's terminated with a period or a full stop will be a sentence. So what we want to do for this exercise is to split the text again and then just join it back together again in some way that will separate each of the sentences onto a new line. So we could insert a line break tag but I'm going to insert a closing and opening paragraph tag just so the end result is a bit more semantically correct. So I'm just going to split the paragraph text. I'm actually using the inner HTML property this time so that we don't lose the span tags that we created before. And then I'm just going to join it back together by first of all closing the existing P tag and then opening a new one. And we'll probably end up with an unclosed P tag at the end, but that is actually okay in HTML. But if we are worried about that, we could also add on one final closing P tag. So let's just assign the result of this back to the inner HTML property of the paragraph element. which for the most part has now done the job. So if we were to add back the full stop at the end of the sentences, what you'll probably find is that there are a few lines where there are full stops included. And the reason for this is in the actual markup, there are some occurrences where there are more than two full stops or periods next to each other. And of course the split function will split these onto new lines as well. So if we didn't want this to happen, we could actually use a regular expression to match when we only get one period on its own. So now we're splitting via a regular expression and we're basically saying match a full stop or period and then perform the split if the next character after that is not a period or an opening tag character. And you can see now when we look through the output, the new paragraph tag is still inserted. So this exercise again is an example where you'd probably be better off going to the actual markup, the HTML and making these changes, but hopefully it gives you a bit of an insight of what you can do with JavaScript and its tag manipulation. So that's it for exercise three, let's have a look at exercise four. So exercise four is just asking us to get a word count for the number of words that are in the paragraph tag and then display a count of that after the heading element. So we're making a big assumption that all words here are separated by one singular space, which isn't always the case in the real world, but just for the simplicity of the exercise, we know that each word is separated by a space. So let's first of all calculate the word count. And I'm going to split the inner text so that we remove any of the HTML tags like the span tags that we've added, and then just get the length of the array that's returned from that. And with our word count calculated, we can just insert this into a new element. And we'll set the text of that new element and then just append it to before the paragraph tag occurs in the document. So that's just a quick way of calculating a word count. Obviously just splitting by a single space is very prone to error and probably won't give you a true reflection of the number of words. So we could use a more complicated regular expression to split the text on, but that would depend a lot on how the content is put together. So we'll leave exercise four here for now and we'll take a look at the final exercise, exercise number five. So exercise five is asking us to do a find and replace on a couple of symbols within the paragraph text. So we're basically saying if there's a question mark encountered, we want to replace it with the thinking face emoji and any exclamation marks can be replaced with the astonished face emoji. So to complete this exercise, it's a little bit more complicated than the previous ones we've done because in exercise three, we actually created new paragraph tags. So we can't just do one find and replace on the initial paragraph tag that was created in the document. Although if you completed exercise three in a slightly different way, you might not have to do that. But for my example, I need to loop through all of the paragraph tags on the page and do that find and replace. So the way we get all paragraph tags on the page is to do a query selector all function, which will get me all of the P tags. And I want to loop through those as an array, but the query selector all function doesn't actually return an array, it returns a node list. So I'm just going to wrap this in the array from function, which will convert our node list into an array. And with our array, I can then call the for each function
and I can call replace on the inner HTML property as it is actually a string, but you'll notice that only one of the question marks actually gets replaced with the emoji. And that's because the replace function stops after it's found one particular occurrence of the string that you're looking for. So again, we can use a regular expression to continue to match by passing in the global modifier. And now you should see that all of the question marks have been replaced in the text. And because the replace function returns a string itself, we can then just chain on another replace function on top of that. And use that to replace all of the exclamation marks with the second emoji. So as I say, if you did have a different solution for exercise 3, you might not have to do this approach where you select all of the p tags on the page. But hopefully you can see that's a different way of selecting all types of tags on a page and then performing a particular action for each one of them. So there you have some sample solutions to the document object model exercises. Hopefully you found that useful to go through some practical applications of your JavaScript skills to an actual document. And as I mentioned at the start of the video, if you do have any different solutions, either share them in the comments directly, or if you create your own pen on CodePen, then do share a link to that as well, as it'd be great to see how you approach these problems.